Good afternoon, my friends, and thank you so much for joining us for News 19 at noon. I'm Andrea Mock, and of course, we are going to start right off with the latest out of the courtroom in Walterboro as the double murder trial of Alec Murdoch continues. Now, early this morning, an interesting decision in the courtroom. Want to get you up to date on this. Defense attorney Dick Harputley and asked the judge if they could take the jury out to Moselle, the scene of the murders, of course, where Maggie and Paul were shot to death. Harputlian said, we believe it would be useful for the jury to see Moselle. Prosecutor Creighton Waters disagreed. He said, listen, the property has changed a lot since the murders because nobody is currently living there or maintaining it. The trees are overgrown. Judge Newman said, though, if the defense wants to arrange that field trip to Moselle, he will do so. All right, now on to today's first witness, and I want to warn you right now, some of this testimony is very graphic. The defense called Dr. Jonathan Eisenstadt to the stand. Eisenstadt is a forensic pathologist. He's also the former chief medical examiner for the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. That's basically like Georgia's sled. Eisenstadt told the jury he disagreed with Dr. Ellen Weimer's opinion about that second gunshot that killed Paul. Murdoch. Dr. Reamer said that she was confident that Paul was shot in the shoulder. It had an upward trajectory and the pellets went into his neck and ultimately blew off his skull and part of his brain out of his head. Dr. Eisensat says though Paul was shot directly in the back of the head. Listen to this. Well, it would have been to the top back of his head. And how far away from the head? Oh no, it would have been pressed against the head. So it would be a contact wound to the back of the head. Correct. Top of the head wasn't shaved, so I can't tell you the exact entrance, but it absolutely um, is a contact range shotgun wound to the head. And from the way it was described by Dr. Reamer, what she described as the exit wound was that it was near the top of the head and a little bit back on the right. So probably right about here. So again, Dr. Eisenstadt saying he believes what Dr. Reamer thought was an exit wound was actually the entrance wound. Now here's the thing that we haven't seen yet and the defense is already done. They haven't said yet why this matters. So let's bring in our own expert, News 19 reporter Sam Perez joins us now live from Walterboro. Now, Sam, this was very, very graphic testimony today, and I was trying to follow, okay, where is the defense going with this? I have two thoughts. One, they're either trying to prove it was so graphic, how could a father do this to a son, or two, they're introducing the idea of there being two gunmen. What did you take away from all of this graphic testimony? What do you think? Yeah, absolutely, Andrea. I certainly think that bringing in, you know, that that father dynamic, they've, you know, the defense this whole time has been saying that, you know, Murdoch is a family man. He loved Maggie. He loved his son, Paul. So I think introducing the idea that this could have been a contact wound, uh, meaning, you know, the gun was pressed against Paul's head. I certainly think that's part of the defense's strategy. I also think uh, this whole testimony is another opportunity for the defense to try and discredit the investigation. Um, so that's a big point that they've been bringing in from, you know, sled to the Colleton County coroner today. They've been trying to say that the investigation did not go according to protocol and could have done better uh, or been done better. So I certainly think that's another part of this. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, now certainly Eisenstadt says he agrees with some of Reamer's conclusions, but now not all of them, like you said, Andrea. So on Maggie's body, Eisenstadt testifies he agrees with the conclusion about four out of five of the bullet wounds. On Paul's autopsy, however, he's drawn a few different conclusions, especially when it comes to the head wound. Dr. Reamer testified Paul was shot from about three feet away. She says the bullet went through his jaw and out his skull, but Eisenstadt has a different opinion. There is no skull here. That's probably the area where the um, shotgun was pressed against the head. This is, I mean, textbook for a contact rain shotgun wound to the head, to the top of the head, not down here. And, um, okay, so in your opinion, if it had happened the way Dr. Reamer said, um, you would not have the directionality of those pellets in the shoulder down, correct? correct. And you would not have 
um, that kind of devastation to the skull. It wouldn't be enough energy. That's correct. You may have some what we call linear fractures, so little lines of fractures, but you wouldn't have the top of the skull completely gone. Eisenstadt has testified he thinks Paul's head should have been shaved during the autopsy to collect more information like evidence of gunshot residue and burning. He's still up on the stand now being questioned by the prosecution. Reporting live in Walterboro, Sam Perez, News 19 WLTX. Andrea, back to you. Yeah, very interesting. Sam, I also agree with you. It's a possibility that he could be asking, brought up that witness and asking those questions just to show that there were flaws in the investigation. That's another excellent point. So again, like Sam said, the uh, prosecution now questioning Dr. Eisenstadt will let you know what happens in that testimony at 2 o'clock when you join us for our live update. And of course, make sure you follow us throughout the day, WLTX.com, or follow along as we stream live on YouTube.